Hi everyone, welcome back to Observe and Resolve, your go-to series for digging into cloud native technology. I'm Henrik Rexed, and today we tackle a powerful and not so trivial topic, which is auto scaling. In Kubernetes, we have the tools for auto scaling, but tools alone don't define strategy. Getting the right scaling policy right, that's usually a real challenge. Before jumping into clever techniques, let's rewind for some basics around scaling. If you want to go deeper, of course, and cover everything about auto scaling, check out the following episode about Kubernetes auto scaling. So a quick recap. There are different scaling approach in Kubernetes, but the focus is usually on workload scaling. We've got two key CRDs, which is HPA, horizontal part auto scaling, adding a replica to your workload. Great at the end for deployment and stateful state. And then we have VPA, vertical pod autoscaler, that it will adjust CPU memory resources. And in fact, it's not ideal for jobs or even languages using garbage collectors. Quick side note, since Kubernetes 1.33, VPA can now dynamically adjust resource requests without rescheduling the pod, whereas before, VPA had to reschedule the pod to basically change the actual request in our deployments or, or stateful sets or whatever it is. So how does autoscaling decide what to scale on? By default, both HPA and VPA use metrics from the Kubernetes metric server, primarily CPU and memory. But there's an issue. CPU and memory don't always reflect application health and reload. That's why I always recommend using external metrics like the actual incoming traffic, like HTTP requests or gRPC request counts. But to do that, you need those metrics to be accessible from the Kubernetes metric server. If you're using Danatrace, you've got two options. I recommend looking into two projects, Keda, a CNCF project that will scale workload based on events and external metrics. And then the other one is Captain, providing a metric server that could be used as an interface to let you send Danatrace query, DQL, straight into your cluster. What if you stick with built-in metrics? Let's say you don't want to extend your cluster metric server. Can we still scale smartly based on service behavior? Yes, obviously it's possible, and here's how. First, we're gonna ob observe, and last, we're gonna resolve. Observing the problem, we will collect two things, resource usage, CPU memory, via the Danatrace operate. Second, we need the application health, so response times, error rates, and for this, we're gonna use open telemetry traces. Now, to link traces back to specific workload, your spans need to have Kubernetes metadata. No problem, we just simply need to configure our open telemetry collector with using, at the end, the Kubernetes attribute processor that will enrich those spans using Kubernetes metadata. How do you know if scaling will actually help to improve the user experience? We want to scale only on workloads where response times and errors are tightly linked to CPU and memory. So how can we correlate both of those metrics? Well, let me introduce to you the Pearson correlations. These magical numbers tell us how two metrics move together. The value could be between minus one and one, closer to one or minus one, there is a strong relationship between the two metrics. Above plus 0 0.7, I would say that it's already a proof that is a strong correlation. For example, if response times increase every time CPU usage increase, that's at the end a scaling opportunity. So let's make it happen with a Dynatrace query. We can fetch CPU memory usage of each workload. We can then look up P99 response times of our traces, then calculate the Pearson correlation number between memory usage and response times, and of course, CPU usage and response times. This will help to pinpoint exactly which workload are under stress and could benefit from scaling. So how can we make this uh, useful in an automation? So once we got this, we got this correlation, we want to launch a dedicated workflow. So step one, we will run the actual DQL query that we just explained. Then we will split into two different paths, one for CPU and one for memory. Then we want to identify when we are getting bad response times and collect the resource usage during this time frame. That will help us to collect the resource thresholds of each workload. Then we can use this value as the thresholds of our new HPA policy, for example. We then generate the 
actual HPA manifest and use Edge Connect to deploy it to the cluster. If you never heard about Edge Connect, well, think of Edge Connect as a secure gateway that lets us interact with cluster behind firewall. So Dynatrace will be connected to Edge Connect and from there we would be able to interact with the local Kubernetes API. Alternatively, we can create a pull request to projects of our GitHub repo, staying fully GitHub's friendly. And that's it. We just build an intelligent auto-scaling strategy using only resource metrics from the Dynatrace operator and traces coming from OpenTelemetry. If this helps simplify your scaling journey, give us a like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss future episodes of Observe and Resolve. Thanks for watching and see you soon for another episode.